Well, we certainly have our work cut out for us, don't we? She's talking to Anivia here. Let's see what she has to say. How are the demons sneaking up on us? No dice, first ghosts crawled over the area, down every hole, nothing. The gray road is completely empty, and then, bam, whole army popped up like a jack-in-the-box. My only leads is a few scouts who didn't come back from the gorges to the southwest. But we found no sign of the secret paths or underground passageways, and definitely no route we can use to quietly move a large force through. But I feel it in my gut. There's some evil scum out there. Just have to look harder. Of course, I could send more scouts, but they just may disappear like the first ones. Why don't you go there yourself and find out what's what? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Punches her palm. No. I'd like to give that rat Nura a good shake. How is she serving the demons, I wonder? I'd be good silver if I turned her upside down and shook her as hard as I could. Something interesting would follow, not lice. Where is Mnago? Nope, zero zilch. A whole lot of nothing. The scum melted into thin air. Soldiers saw her jump out the window, run through the square into the front of the citadel, and suddenly disappear. We haven't heard anything from her since. But I don't like it. I'm telling you, this is bad. First of all, her kind don't just give up. If we can't see her, it means she's setting a trap for us somewhere we won't expect. I mean, it would be great if the demon lord just gobbled her up for her failures, but I think that's too much to hope for. That's not the worst part. We have more interesting question, you know. I wonder how she'll teleport from the city. If by that time you'd already hung the banner, the soldiers are saying it probably wasn't in full force by then, but you and I both know that's dross. She wasn't supposed to be able to teleport, but she did. The question is how? She didn't teleport, I bet. I she just turned invisible. I gotta go. I appreciate that little fast travel mechanic there. There she is. Need info. Demon hordes keep attacking us without warning, as if they're pairing of thin air. You know how they're doing it? <clears throat> Can't say for sure, but I heard rumors. The place called the Molten Scar, where the Grey Road makes sharp turns and forks. It must be hard to miss. It's a big gorge with lava flowing at the bottom of Rock Sorceress as a layer there. If you continued your offensive beyond Dresden, the Rock was supposed to organize an army at your flank and cut you off from behind. I don't know what it means. Maybe she maintains a rift there. I get it. She scoffed at me, that little snot. That's a cooking almanac. Not a cookbook. March on! Oh, it's a window. Is it this guy? I think. How can I help you? <coughs> Those pipes of tobacco from Garand's. Lights it, blows a clown of smoke. You meant Canabras, right? Yes, I had a contract to assassinate a rather overconfident demon named Kylas there. I guess that counts as participation in the siege of Canabras. Not that my employer had any interest in the actual outcome of the battle. Come to think of it, the information my client provided me with was almost suspiciously accurate. They seemed to be aware both of the impending attack on Canabras and of the fact that Kylas was going to be there. What happened with that dagger, anyway? Yes, that was a failure. It was supposed to be a clean job. An anonymous client, a worthy target, a substantial fee. But the client insisted that I use an enchanted dagger they provided. I was assured that a single hit would be enough to finish the job, but it didn't work as expected. It was a serious blow to my reputation. And my reputation is everything to me. I'll give you a chance to atone. I want to hire you to hunt the dragon. A large adult female? The one that's been snatching people and carrying them off? I've heard about her. That's an impressive target. I can take this job, but only if we do it soon. 
I'm expecting a new assignment from my regular client. And I'll have to leave as soon as I have the orders. And of course, you should know that this dragon will not come cheaply. Two and a half thousand gold. Paid in advance. Sure thing, Skipper. Excellent. Let's get down to business. It's no easy thing to take down a dragon when you don't have wings. So you'll need to follow my lead. The best thing would be to catch her by surprise in her lair. But we need to find it first. Of course, since she doesn't leave tracks, that might be tricky. But I think I have a solution. We need to go west of Dresden to the Grimwood Forest. Oh, really? The dragon's been seen there often. According to the scouts, this is likely because there's still some wild game left in those parts. We'll set up an ambush there. I hope I can rely on your honesty. I understand that on our way to the dragon, there may be other fights or places we need to visit for various reasons. That's to be expected. However, should I see that you are deliberately delaying the contract, or that you're dragging me off to assault some demon citadel instead of going after the dragon, we will have to revise the terms of our agreement. Understood. Onwards. Hello. So, what do you reckon about everything that's come crashing down on us? All the responsibility, command, this new power? I haven't figured out it out, honestly, but I'll tell her what I would want. I envy your confidence. In a good way. It's great to believe that everything is going the way it should. I'm still frightened by what happened in the Grey Garrison. Were we really chosen? By Iomade herself? <laughs> you know, back when I was a snot-nosed kid who just started down the path to becoming a paladin, I imagined once or twice that I was going to do something heroic. The lights would shine down on me, the trumpets would sing, I'd hear the voice of the goddess, or at least her herald, you know? I'd be informed that I had been chosen for a great cause. But that's the point where my imagination always failed me. Somehow, it really happened. Without all the trumpets or the herald or even anyone explaining what I had to do. Though it's clear as day, my place is here. In this demon-ridden wound. Quite a lovely war going on, in fact. Endless, I hear. I'm gonna need some time to wrap my head around this. <laughs> <sighs> Spare me an hour and I'll crawl into some dark corner and whine about my hard lot. What can I tell you? I cry easily. Think of the character to you greatly. So you could say, I did what I thought was right. I tried to help a good person with their troubles. What came of it? I'm sorry, but I won't find peace until I track down Curl and Jenna. What were they thinking? Is there any way to get through to them? But I just admit I was terribly wrong. There's another thing that's worrying me. The way... People react to your power and mind. They think that if we've been chosen by a Mayday, we need to pray at our feet. I'm not comfortable with the younger warriors hanging around my every word. <clears throat> I feel alone. Nobody else is going to sit with me and celebrate saving a beer cart. I'd like to regain, if not friendship, then at least the other trust of the knights, especially those I respect and some of my friends, like Elan. Good talk. Oh, where's this dragon we're supposed to be killing? Grimwood Forest, eh? What direction will that be? That is all the way over there. How the hell are we going to get there? 
Oh my god, you seriously expect me to go all the way over there? Dragon hunts. <laughs> Try and sacrilege. I have the least to blow as many victims in the drake here at night when we hear the hoarse voice offering blasphemous prayers to powers of the very sound of Yeah, sure, let's check it out some sort. Sounds delightful, we even brought the child with us. Is there a formation there? Trouble? No. Baby. Tear right through it. My inspect tool is open embarrassingly enough. Forwards! I won't let you hurt my friends. Got land here. Taking names. Mind over Let's this quick. <laughs> This is my path. Ready to serve. You've crossed the wrong Did mongrel. we step on their toes as well? I want to focus no, first. Strike with all your might. We have to do this. So he's restless. I wonder why. Esmo, Axe, yes. Esmo, Axe, yes. Look, you want to hear promises of blasphemy and fun and all this stuff, so where is it? Oh? So I'm gonna jump in and attack me as a 
There's like some undead zombie or something guarding us. I'm your blade. Kill plus one and Rebellion, Topaz Ring. Protection from evil. Holy boy. Traveling I'll take since it's not too heavy. We can leave the horseshoe. The sword. Okay, the sword. Let's move. Oh, cave! We missed a cave. We never miss a cave. Miss a cave. Come on now. I think that's six ace spells we can do. Take a look. Victory is worth the pain. Simply business. He also has a charge. Let's get him on. This. I'd appreciate it more if you didn't set off the other guy. Ah, a surprise. Follow me. Doesn't mean how Healing can only use it once a day, you should do more than that, shouldn't it? I feel like. Who's the other one here? Not his body, just like you think it's in yellow. I want it. I want to see what's I tire of waiting. Time to work. Oh, this guy goes down that fast against the dragon. Holy good. What is this thing? Oh, 
Pain. What the hell is he? Did he run back up there, that stupid shit? Trying out to be a real epic battle, isn't it? It's like an actual, uh, it's a unique thing. 
Chapter titled Half the Pages Are Missing, Blank Pages at the Back of the Book Survive Along with Final Entries of the Diary's Unknown Owner. For many days spent exploring the area and studying traces of life to the sites of the desecrated shrines, I, at last, stuck among the Defiler's Trail. My worst suspicions were confirmed. The cult are circles led by a Demodan, a creature from the bowels of the abyss. The clergy, whose temples had been vandalized in the attacks, were perplexed. What was the link between them? What did the shrines of Iomede, Gorum, and Toreg have in common? It's very simple. Demonads hate all gods in equal measure and strive to do destroy each and every shrine they come across. Alas, Demodans do not always work alone. The one I was tracking had gathered a small coven around it, a gang of the deranged and depraved. With all skin and call, folk will themselves be convinced by the vile tenants spewed by these beasts. For reference, Demonads were created by titans who had been driven to the abyss by the gods. Demonads' sole purpose is to serve their creators. They are blind slaves of the tools of destruction, liking even the smallest spark of what majesty granted the faithful when they have contact with their divine patrons, whether it be Gorum or even the universe who decried Rovagug. Mortals who convert to this faith of lies must be exterminated along with their false prophets. That is why we inquisitors and many deities have banded together to hunt down such monsters in joint effort. After covering a few dozen miles, get to the heretic's hidden lair, a dank cave deep in the forest. At sunrise tomorrow, I'll make my way inside the cave to study the inner passage and sketch map for future raid. One should never underestimate Demodans and their minions. I have no intention of attacking alone, but at least I can scout out the site of coming attack, rather than sitting on my hands while my comrades muster contingent make their way here. Let me be with me. Well, we finish that job at least. Another feather in the cap, but what's his name? You know what you're doing. What's your Good. name? Yes, Grable. Another spell here for her. School of Tsunami? Okay, so... We should move. We'll make things right. They wouldn't put in more than one, would they? Open your heart to me. I am helpful, am I not? Why did I have to open my mouth? Adventures await. Meditate on your mistakes. Might make you feel better. I'll make my own legend. What's this dude? Gormandizer. Gormandizer. You guys can probably just move back here a bit. We can bottleneck these dudes. Hmm? I stand. We cannot be defeated. You should have listened to reason. Sacramento is corrupt. 
Kill the heretics, may they know the powerfully great titans, the true masters of this world. That's her, that's for sure. Almost dead. I won't give up. Cut. Oh, that's nice. Wasn't as sweet as they should. Not a quarter. Any brush plates? What's to do? I'll hit you. That's uh, that's the upgrade we've been looking for, is it? Frothy liquid collected in the veins of a demon after a subjected procedure <coughs> magical preservation. Objects tempered in this liquid gain distinct magical properties. Oh boy. We'll save that for later. Speaking of saving, march on. Says. There is no greater satisfaction than overcoming a challenge. That is, of course, until one day the challenge overcomes you. Wait, did misses. 
I'm telling you. Woo! Just for that puzzle. I cannot believe I almost missed that. I would never forgive myself. You want one? <coughs> Wrong turn there, did we? Try to fight them. What the hell is this? What this for? Nice! Pray to Yomide, replies from the lips of the kneeling old man, he speaks softly and steadily without raising his head or otherwise acknowledging your presence. After finishing his prayer, he looks at you with clear eyes. What do you feel, stranger? Some of these demons tried to escape for some reason they didn't teleport. You have a good eye. Yes, it's true. I received a special gift from my goddess. My presence makes demons weak. It stops them from escaping through the plains. Tough luck for them. My name is Zerdin. I'm the commander of this crusade. My name is Baron. I'm the commander of my own crusade. Did you kill these dudes? Yes, these men are That's what I do. Why don't you join me? Fighting the banners is an official crusade. I've found neither righteousness nor dignity there. Forgive me, but my path is mine alone. Okay, then. I mean to keep you safe. Now give me a post less than friendly. I assume it's. Is that a trap? It might be a trap. It's not a trap. Page from a crusader's diary. Chased him during the day and followed him at night. I found his tracks in the demonic wastelands of the wound. I set up ambushes in the cities, hunting a hunter is a strange job. The demon was seeking victims, leaving behind a trail of crusaders tortured to death, their hearts carved out of their bodies. And I was seeking him. Kneeling at my nightly prayers, I asked myself, why do I want to rid the world of this particular monster? New demons come almost daily from the rifts of the world wound. I could fight them whenever I wanted. I could join my crusader brethren in any garrison, but I chased them for three years relentlessly like a hound following a trail. Finally, he came for me himself. My perseverance drew his attention and made me bait. There are demons who take special pleasure in torturing the weak and helpless. 
But he was different. He was drawn by danger. He liked killing the strong, the proud, the unbreakable. That's what he told me. I listened to him and was horrified by how similar that we were. Then we fought. I killed him. These were three long years, goddess. I was returning to Canabras after the long hunt, after an exhausting fight, carrying a terrible burden. The fringes of the city, a light guided my way. Not your light, no. The light of fires near the city walls, where the Inquisitors were burning more potential renegades. I walked my dusty armor, covered with sword marks, past the people, gathered to watch the execution. I overheard ecstatic words of the executioner. I remembered the words the demon said before his death. I have never entered the city gates. I didn't kneel to your temple. I didn't share a meal with other crusaders. I, Berengar the Tall, no longer belong to this crusade, not after these long years, not after what I realized and heard. As it lay dying, the demon said to me, We are what you will become. Let us be off. We are what you will become. If you mean dead, then you are correct. Let's move! The council which say depends on support of neuroscience and foreign countries. Well, the council will see to it that no political problems interfere with the regular and full gold and recruits to dress it. So, Ted Burr's first meeting. From the Logistic Council, the success of military and logistic ac action depends on regular supply of everything troops will need to the judicious distribution of resources. The Logistic Council, made up of experienced officers, Sure, there is no chaos in the army while the commander's attention is focused on the front line. With the Tolfa man whose dark hair is already tinted with gray, he greets you with a brisk military salute. My name is Captain Sayokines. I command the vanguard of a mercenary group called the Blackstone Company. I come from Andoran to assist you. Which means? Tell me about this unit. But some company is proud to be recognized one of Andoran mercenary regiments. For not much of unscrupulous cell sores looking to oppress innocent and serve tyrants of the world. No, we're adventurers eager to get involved in a dangerous expertise <coughs> enterprise. And they both pockets full of gold and clear conscience. Have your cake and eat it too, eh? Makes two of us. Which is why we held voting among our units. We were glad to accept Queen Galfrey's invitation to join the crusade. Some of our commanders, ahem, did voice it with pleasure with the son she offered. But like I said, we Andorans are free people who cannot be pushed around, or well, cannot be bought, only convinced. What about you? I don't want to say I'm a soldier, but I'm an explorer and all around honest man. Okay? Get on with your duties. Yes, sir. Glad to be at your command. It'd be an honor to serve you, Commander. If you have any questions, let me know. If you need to talk, I'll be happy to lend an ear. Ah, Grandma Grant the Director. Good day, your commandership. 
is we the artistic board of Next Door Theatre. We are still working on our piece about your heroism. We have even taken a few extra crew members. We now have a master of stage equipment and scenery. This is my granddaughter Tina. Tina, say hello to his commandership. We are faced with another dilemma. We simply cannot decide on the climatic moment for the act that's all about the Battle of Dresden. Here, you listen to the options. Option 1. The commander, so that's you, launches himself into a catapult and smashes down the fortress wall, allowing the armies to rush inside. Option 2. The commander, that's you again, masquerades as a succubus and creeps into Dresden in disguise, opens the gates to the Crusaders. Option 3. The commander, that's you again, rides to the attack on an enormous mountain goat, or should we call it a battering ram, breaks down the city gates. Well, what say you? myself a catapult, sounds fun. Wonderful, wonderful. It's like time we inject some thrills into our show. I'm a Gretlin and her entourage move away, but their voices break so well that you can easily hear the rest of the conversation. Catapult was my favorite from the very start. I hope it's not considered too lowbrow a device for serious traumatic offering. Did you forget the role of the commander is being played by a cyclops? How are we going to launch a lambkin out of a catapult? Are we going to fight a catapult that won't just break under his weight? Calm yourself, Tina. It's just a minor snag. Can't achieve success with a few difficulties along the way. Think of something you'll see. <sighs> You've marched me to the bones today. Pipe down. Sharp looking Kitsune gives you a quick business like bell. Commander! Commanders be for Sir Urgent, so let's not stand on ceremony. I am Lady Konomi, the official attache of Neuroscien. Here are my credentials. Her Majesty has instructed me to lead your headquarters diplomatic council. Honestly, I was surprised when Lady Konomi asked me to join the council, but I will do my best to fill the shoes of a trained diplomat. Ah, yeah, strange. I got invited to the council too, so I'm sure foreign ambassadors will be thrilled to see my face and my manners. Lady Konomi, you haven't mistaken me for some other crusader land, have you? on the council agenda today. I hate to say it, Commander, not everyone in Neuroscien is pleased with your progress. Some believe that, to use their words, you are out of control and fancy yourself an independent leader. It wouldn't surprise me, too, if you countered supply disruptions in the near future. I would suggest quelling their anger, show the capital you haven't forgotten about the chain of command. For example, you could hold a parade in honor of Her Majesty. We need to demonstrate that we're keeping their side in mind. Why don't we invite the capital's high priest of Dresden for a religious festival? To be appropriate, the church's support will shield us from accusations of schemers. Are they out of their mind? We got a whole Dresden full of soldiers who need medicine, food, and weapons. Until I run is taken care of, we can't waste a single coin on pointless celebrations. What did I do to piss off near Asylum? You were too good. You reclaimed Kenebras, you won the Battle of Dresden, you're a menace to the world wound, your authority grows, and your influence of the Queen's confidence diminishes. This creates the impression there is only enough space for you at the top. Members of the Royal Council are afraid that you'll muscle them out of political arena altogether. What a politician. After all, if you're doing so well, Her Majesty doesn't need them that much. Therefore, they might try to discredit you, impede your war effort, reduce the scale of your victories, make some concessions, and they'll see... You're open to negotiations. What can my advisors say? There are four. Aren't the wishes of Cap obvious enough? Well, very well. It's here to council. Lucio, what the high priest? Without a doubt, we should remain loyal to the Queen. Expect hierarchy, but that doesn't mean we have to kowtow to royal council whenever they ask, I think. You'd neither do their bidding nor seek quarrel with them, rather try to take their middle path. 
The high priest in Eris Sign is a powerful figure. It is a schemer or politician. By inviting him to the festival, we'll show both that we're not cutting ties with Eris Sign. I don't know we have influential friends that are not about to buckle under royal council. Oh, land. I think the capital's always a good idea. What are they going to do about us? <coughs> We're the ones protecting them from the demons, not the other way around. Having loyalties from the capital is great. There are more important things, like having the loyalty of our own soldiers. When the demons come, what will we do? Shake our fists and say we've got powerful friends in Neuroscion? Why would we have prayed? Symbolic and affordable. Show them how much you respect the value of your majesty. Courtesy to those who pay for your own swords and bread, the royal council has power. If you wouldn't want to turn those patrons and adversaries and best influences greater, yours or theirs. Please them, and they will stop bringing about your loyalty, and you will we'll focus on your war. That's clear. I think if I throw a prey bill to try to think I'm sucking up to her. We are fighting demons as well, so it would make sense we hold a religious festival. Moment, Commander, understand that you're used to being the highest authority now matters, but political decisions are an exception. Professional in this field, you are not. By ignoring my recommendations, you are not only deliberately seeking conflict with capital, Disregarding common sense as well, I urge you to reconsider. I not challenge your decision, however, I have no choice but to inform the capital you have disregarded my recommendations. Actions like this precisely would give no sign cause for the uncertain commander who replies to client stands in the future. See, so the high priest receives proper welcome and let him know the strength of our faith is absolute as our loyalty to Mendev. And with that, we can bring the meeting to the to a close. And unfortunate things were so tense. I'm sure we'll have many more opportunities to resolve any misunderstandings between us. Hail, Commander. Middle-aged dwarf, who has quickly seen some combat, salutes you with one barely moving, bone dry hand. On her face are huge, scarred claw marks. A black eye patch covers one eye. She is watching in with the other, intent and somber. Doran Langa Stranglehold, Chair of Logistics Council at your service. Get ourselves to an ugly situation that requires your decision. I believe this council will benefit from my vast experience surviving with gear that consists of rocks and sticks, and where of my dinner that's not squirming on your place considered a feast. All in all, could kind of like our crusade. I won't lie to you, our logistics are a mess. We need more of everything, and what we do have is in disarray. Crates of provisions are rotting away in storehouses because some idiot quartermaster spilled beer on the papers. And fools are not the worst problem, but there's also theft. Some officers grease palms to get a helmet with stylish plumage or a fancy blade from Neuroscion. Meanwhile, that means that ordinary soldiers are being armed with barely more than kitchen knives. Hammer and tongs? I'm the entire logistics staff to the mums rush. The question is, where do we find capable and honest people to replace them? Get some veterans on the job. People who have had their fill in the front lines. They know firsthand what life is like for a common soldier. What the rations taste like and how the boots are always the wrong size. My suggestion is to call some experienced, well-connected supply craftsmen from Neuroscion. Them have their cushy jobs in Mendev. Work up a sweat for the good of the crusade. Yeah, we kind of alienated them with that first one, so we should probably... We'll do. So we'll have quartermasters, a friend or two, even on the Royal Council. 
That's decided. No matter what our report masters are like, there's no possible way they can be worse than what we have now. Results will be reported to you, and if anything else comes up, we'll call the council right away. We started resting here, and a dream sequence came up. Dreams have puzzled the minds of mortals since ancient times. Strangely, the most obvious explanation of the mystery of dreams has appeared quite recently. The most obvious, but obviously wrong one is that dreams are the delirium of a tired mind as it digests the day's events. Ancient humans were much smarter when the thoughts of dreams were messages of good patrons or the opposite. The interventions of demonic powers. In this case, both hypotheses are correct, illogical as that may be. The commander is asleep. In his anxious dreams, he sees bloodstained stones, smoking torches, rusty chains, and bars. Once again, he is in the dungeon of Dresden, chained in a cell. Huge demons slumber around, clawing at the filthy walls, the horrifying sound. Death in their fang jaws seems imminent, but more painful still is expectation of tortures that never begin. Unable to move, barely conscious, and a horrible semi delirium commander. Words of prayer, because I'm a paladin, you know. Sacred words disappear into the void like stones down a well. It's unlikely they reach the ears of any deity. The fever of endless expectation is broken by a whisper, a gentle breath, fresh air. The stifling darkness. The ruby eyes of demoness peer at commander through the bars. She is similar to the other creature of the abyss, but also entirely dissimilar. Remember me? I am Arushale. You deny me freedom, but I hold no grudge. I've come to set you free. The chains holding the commander's body come with the dust. The dark visor takes her step toward him, passing through the bars as easily as they are made of paper, and holds out her hand. Fly with me! In response, commander can only mumble. I don't know. Remember in Kingmaker, there was a hottie of the Grove, what was she called? And she turned out to be bad. So get back to you. Please don't make me leave, I wish you no harm. Dungeon disappears, and the demoness and commander are flying over a moonlit plain. Enemies are hunting out demons. Some acquired unusual powers that are unprecedented among common demons. You were also hunting them. We we're trying to figure out who is sending them and where their source of power lies. I will show you where to find the answer. Finger, whose manicured claw, points to a clifftop where stands an ancient fortress slowly crumbling to dust. A bell without a tongue, an insane crone, make it speak once more, and she won't be able to keep her silence either. She'll give you the answers. Wake up and try to understand what's happened in the dream. The image fades away. The commander opens his eyes and whispers a word. I don't alien by the passing dream. Green Gates, the name of the fortress. If the demoness is to be believed, curious notion. There is an enraged crone hiding there. Who knows where the demons with these unheard of abilities are coming from. I don't will be intriguing to learn who the crone is, what she knows, and whether this dream is but a trick to lure the commander to another trap. We cannot find out without visiting the place from the dream. Oops. Right. Now we're through that red tape, I will uh, take a bow. Um, yeah, it's a whole different ballgame now, folks. Um, I'll probably do a special stream for Halloween, you never know. It'll be a surprise. Stay tuned, and I will see you around. Bye-bye.